Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, champion of the weak and the oppressed, valiant fighter for truth and justice, who is faster than an airplane, stronger than a locomotive, who comes from interstellar space, but who walks the earth as mild Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. When we last saw him, Superman, as Clark Kent, had come to Boulder City in the Buffalo Hills with old Asa Hatch, scientist and photographer, to cover the dedication of a new national monument. On their way west, they had discovered a plot against the reform governor, Al J. Carson, and Kent had allowed himself to be carried off by the gang in the governor's place in the hope of learning their plan. The gang had thrown him in a lake and left him, but not until Kent had overheard them say that the gang chief himself, Pete Flores, was back at the executive mansion. Hearing the worst, Kent had broken his bonds, flashed upward out of the water and returned, only to find the governor gone. As our story continues today... Superman is still running through the silent rooms, calling. Listen. Governor. Governor Carson. Where are you? Governor Carson. Governor. Not a sign of him. If the door of that closet wasn't damaged, he hadn't even forced the lock. What's that? Footsteps. Someone's coming. If it's that devil Flores, or whoever it is, he's coming down the hall outside the door. I'll change back to Clark Kent till I know who it is. Governor, I give you my word. It was all the doing of that fellow Keegan. Wait a minute, Hatch. Don't move. Who's that back of the curtain? Gosh, is that you, Governor? Why, Asa oh. Hatch. Kent, my dear fellow. So it's you, is it? Governor, where have you been? What's happened? Hatch, what's been going on? From what my old friend Carson tells me, we all have a little explaining to do. I'll say we have. We'll begin with you, young man. I understand you're a newspaper man named Clark Kent. That's right, Governor. Say, I'm awfully sorry I had to lock you in that closet. I, I didn't want to, but it was just touch and go. Yeah, that's what you did to my chin, too. Touch and go. <laughs> well, I'll forgive you. Ada tells me it was all in a good cause. But what happened to you? Where did you go? Same to you, young man. What happened to you? Where did you go? Governor, about five seconds after I locked you up, the gang came in the window and carted me off. My dear fellow, who was it? Our old pal, Dutchy Gann. Hatch, you remember Dutchy? Oh, indeed, yes. Well, Dutchy and his pals breezed in the window, slipped a bag over my head, and carried me away in a car. But what then? How'd you get loose? Oh, I don't know. I guess they got tired of something. Anyway, they rolled me out, and I came back, and here I am. But look, how did you get out of that closet? Well, I came to after a while and began kicking and yelling, and the guard came in and heard me. Oh. And, of course, the first thing I tried to do was phone for the police, and I couldn't. Oh, why not? The wires were cut. That was the first thing that suggested you might have been right, Kent. So I called off my car and I went down to headquarters in person. And the first person he saw, my dear fellow, was myself. Yes, what? luckily. They were giving old Aza a tough examination. Yes. He wanted to know where he came from and all that. Oh, tremendous excitement. Jailbreak, prisoners escaped. They thought I might have arranged it, Kent. Me? Anyway, I got Hatch out of there and we came right back. Yes, and what I want to know now is what in the name of time is going on? Uh, it's a long story. I won't bore you with it. I'll just say this. Pete Flores is a crook and a murderer. And a mighty clever one at that. Before I was elected, he just about ran this territory. I swore that I'd put him and his whole gang out of business. And meanwhile, he's doing his best to put you out of business, eh? Well, I've got Enrico Frame. He was Flores' right-hand man. Just a matter of time till I get Flores himself. Unless he gets you first, Governor, is that it? He won't, Kent. That sort of rat hasn't been there. Well, what about tonight? Well, you said yourself Flores wasn't there. He left the dirty work to Gann. Well, really, Carson, I don't think it matters. Anyway, they missed fire, so that's that. Oh, no, don't you believe it. What? Well, bless me, Kent, what do you mean? Governor, you've got to be careful. I heard them talking tonight while they were driving me off. And I'm telling you, this is just the beginning. They've got something else up their sleeve. Well, what is it? And I don't know. But they're counting on it. Carson, if I were you, I should keep to myself out of the public eye until this fellow Flores is finished with once and for all. Oh, that's right, can't do that. Even if I wanted to, I, it would be the most cowardly thing I could think of. I couldn't do it. Oh, my dear fellow, why not? The Buffalo Hills ceremony, Zeta. Have you forgotten what you came out here for? Oh, Governor, can't you get out of that? Absolutely impossible. There'll be thousands of people here from all over the country. I'm making the principal speech. Ah, yes, yes, dedicating the Pioneer's National Monument. Well, just the same, Governor, you'll be taking an awful chance. Why, it's a perfect setup for anybody that wanted to get you. Well, all right, Kent. After all, we can't live forever. Hello, who's that? Come in. Governor, I beg your pardon, Well, sir. it's Lieutenant Maxson. Come in, Maxson. Governor, I'm mighty sorry to bother you at this time of night. Well, too bad if I was in bed, but I'm not, so forget it. Gentlemen, meet Lieutenant Maxson, one of the guard officers out at Buffalo Hill. 
Buffalo Hills uh, at the National Monument? Yes. Ah. Maxim, this is Asa Hatch, the picture man, and Clark Kent, reporter for the Daily Planet back east. How do you do, Lieutenant? Glad right. to know you. So then, what's on your mind? First thing, Governor. Did you know your wires are cut? I did, and I do. Go on. All right, sir. Colonel Bowles told me to get right in here and give you a special message. Colonel Bowles? Yes, superintendent, officer in complete charge. Oh. Head of construction, head of engineering, head of the guard. Well, go on, Lieutenant. What's up? Governor, it may seem a little queer, but the colonel called me a while ago and said for me to come right into Boulder City and get you. Get me? Yes, sir. He wants me to bring you out to the monument. Said it was important and not to fail. What? Tonight? Oh, good heavens, man. I know, I know. I, it seems Ooh. queer and all that, but... You know the colonel, sir. I do. He's as level-headed a man as ever was. Well, if he thinks it's better, is it? It is. Governor, look here, sir. You're, you're surely not going. Oh, dangerous, my dear fellow. No, no, Highly no. dangerous. Quit that, will you? Both of you. You got a car downstairs, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. I drove in myself. Take you right back to the monument and bring you home again. All right. We're on our way. Oh, uh, look here. You two don't need to come along. What? Miss a story in the making? Oh, Carson, you don't know him. All right. I guess the car will hold for him. Wait. What's the matter? I thought I saw someone sticking down the car. Why, huh? uh, no, there's no one there. It's lighted all the way to the end. Well, I could have sworn. Well, never mind. Come along. It's after midnight. You'll get a chance to see what the new Pioneers National Monument looks like by moonlight. Yeah. Lead the way, Maxim. But the governor was right. There was a form stealing silently in the darkness, out of the lighted corridor. The treacherous secretary, Keegan who learned what was doing and who visited the car of the guard officer in the courtyard below, who crept through the shadows to place a certain small object well down in the cushions of the rear seat, an object which would stay hidden and unnoticed till the car reached the most dangerous portion of the mountain road and then do its work, still hidden, still unnoticed. How are you up front there, Kent? You all right? Okay, thanks, Governor. How's Mr. Hatch? Almost asleep, Kent. I, I find the motion unusually soothing. Uh, getting up there, aren't we, Maxon? Yes, sir, Governor. Getting sort of sharp. That's why I closed the windows. Look out there, Razor. Isn't that some view? Say, wake up, will you? Uh, what, what did you say? I say, look at that view. How'd you like to photograph that, huh? Hey, that's something, all right. Yeah. Gosh, we're right on the edge of nothing. How far down is it? Uh, what'd you say? Uh, <laughs> boy, I'm worse than old days. Uh. Are we getting to the monument? Yeah. It's almost there. Just around the corner. Say, watch what you're doing, will you? Oh, great Scott, I, I almost dropped off this sleep. Yeah, I'll say you did. We were heading straight for the guardrail. How far down did you say that was from here, Governor? Huh. Hey, that's funny. They're both asleep. Are they? Yes. It's sort of queer, isn't it? Say, what's going on? What's happening? Maxon, watch what you're doing. You're heading for the rail. We'll go over the cliff. Maxon, look out! Oh, can't send much of this. Good thing it's a solid steel body. Time for Superman to take charge. Up the door. Up, up. Yeah, now they're falling clear. Off the cliff and down into the valley. Must be a thousand feet. Got to dive down, down and catch that car before it hits. Down, down. Two hundred. Five hundred. Almost there. Now then. Stop. I have it. I plugged the car. Now back to the road up above before they know what's happened. Up, up and away. Up, up. Here. Here. What happened? What's going on? Please, huh? say, Kent, I, I believe I've been asleep. Kent, what's happened? Why are you driving? What's the matter with Max? It's all right, Governor. Huh? We had a little accident, went through the guardrail. Everybody what? fell asleep. Must have been a leak in the exhaust. Gas came up in the car. What's that? We went through the guardrail. My heavens, what a narrow escape. Oh, the car got banged up a little. Lucky it still runs. Oh, my head. Ah, oh, here comes Max around. Now oh, we're all present and accounted for. But, Kent, I, I don't understand. Well, don't ask me, Governor. I guess we should have left the window open. You mean to say... Kent, I can't believe it. We went through the guardrail and didn't go over the cliff. Miraculous. I don't remember a thing. 
Say you can pull up now, Mr. Kent. That's the office. We've got to the monument. Well, if you ask me, we're mighty lucky. After we got back on the road, I didn't think this whole buggy would go at all. There we are. Uh, well, I'm a little dizzy, but I guess I can navigate. What about you, Hatch? I appear to have been sadly bumped and bruised by a, a person or persons unknown. This way, gentlemen. Hmm. I guess the colonel's still up. His light's on. Come on in. Well, I'd be mighty glad to know what's going on. Who leads the way, Max? This is the office. Colonel Bowles' quarters. Funny. He said he'd be waiting for us. And if you say there's a light in the room, knock again. Hmm. Probably fall on the street. Give it a good bang. Gentlemen, I think we'd better break in the door. Why, really? I can't. What do you mean? I'm afraid something's happened. Someone's been here before us. But... Yes, he's right, Carson. Break it down. What do you say, sir? By all means. Go ahead, Maxim. Here. I'll lend you a hand. <laughs> Come on, it's going once again. There we are. Why, there he is. He's sitting right at his desk. He's asleep. Colonel Bowles. Bowles. Good heavens, he doesn't hear us. Hatch! Look at him. No, he doesn't hear us. He'll never hear anything again. You were right, Kent. Someone has been here before us. And the question now is who? And what would Bowles have told us if he'd been allowed to live? Sudden appalling mystery at the Pioneer's National Monument. Is Asa Hatch right? Did someone call on Colonel Bowles to make sure that he kept silent forever? And if so, what had he found out? What strange piece of news that made him call the governor in the dead of night? And above all, what terrible danger, unknown to everyone, creeps down on Governor Carson? Tune in next time and follow the story of Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted